Shouldn't it be easier? Box was designed and developed to innovate your facilities management and enhance users' experience. Box makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. It enhances the communication, making work seamless, and boosts the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple, just by scanning a QR code. Never Managing facilities is challenging. Too many papers, phone calls, and emails. Shouldn't it be easier? 
Box was designed and developed to innovate your facility's management and enhance users' experience. Box makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. Communication, making work seamless and boost the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple. Just by scanning a QR code, never miss a request again. You have a real-time view about what's going on in your facility without having to pick up the phone or send an email. Keep track of your performance, inventory, and costs through analytics dashboard. Fox serves various industries like manufacturing, education, hospitality, commercial, healthcare, and more. Start saving your time and money now. Learn more at www.foxmine.io. Managing facilities is challenging. Too many papers, phone calls, and emails. Shouldn't it be easier? Box was designed and developed to innovate your facility's management and enhance users' experience. Box makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. It enhances the communication, making work seamless, and boosts the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple. Just by scanning a QR code, never miss a request again. You have a real-time view about what's going on in your facility without having to pick up the phone or send an email. Keep track of your performance, inventory, and costs through analytics dashboard. Fox serves various industries like manufacturing, education, hospitality, commercial, healthcare, and more. Start saving your time and money now. Learn more at www.foxmine.io. Managing facilities is challenging. Too many papers, phone calls, and emails. Shouldn't it be easier? Box was designed and developed to innovate your facility's management and enhance users' experience. Box makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. It enhances the communication, making work seamless, and boosts the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple. Just by scanning a QR code, never miss a request again. You have a real-time view about what's going on in your facility without having to pick up the phone or send an email. Keep track of your performance, inventory, and costs through analytics dashboard. Fox serves various industries like manufacturing, education, hospitality, commercial, healthcare, and more. Start saving your time and money now. Learn more at www.foxmine.io. Managing facilities is challenging. Too many papers, phone calls, and emails. Shouldn't it be easier? Box was designed and developed to innovate your facility's management and enhance users' experience. Box makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. It enhances the communication, making work seamless, and boosts the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple. Just by scanning a QR code, never miss a request again. You have a real-time view about what's going on in your facility without having to pick up the phone or send an email. Keep track of your performance, inventory, and costs through analytics dashboard. Fox serves various industries like manufacturing, education, hospitality, commercial, healthcare, and more. Start saving your time and money now. Learn more at www.foxmine.io. Managing facilities is challenging. Too many papers, phone calls, and emails. Shouldn't it be easier? Box was designed and developed to innovate your facility's management and enhance users' experience. Box makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. It enhances the communication, making work seamless, and boosts the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple. Just by scanning a QR code, never miss a request again. You have a real-time view about what's going on in your facility without having to pick up the phone or send an email. Keep track of your performance, inventory, and costs through analytics dashboard. Fox serves various industries like manufacturing, education, hospitality, commercial, healthcare, and more. Start saving your time and money now. Learn more at www.foxmine.io. Managing facilities is challenging. 
too many papers, phone calls, and emails? Shouldn't it be easier? Box was designed and developed to innovate your facility's management and enhance users' experience. Box makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. It enhances the communication, making work seamless, and boosts the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple. Just by scanning a QR code, never miss a request again. You have a real-time view about what's going on in your facility without having to pick up the phone or send an email. Keep track of your performance, inventory, and costs through analytics dashboard. Fox serves various industries like manufacturing, education, hospitality, commercial, healthcare, and more. Start saving your time and money now. Learn more at www.foxmine.io. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are still waiting for the participants to join. We have 51 participants now, and we are actually expecting around 300 participants. So please uh, give some time to let everybody's in before we start the session. Good morning to those who just joined. Um, for your information, this session is also streaming live on our YouTube channel, Fox CMMS.
the traffic is busy at meeting people into the session, so please bear with us. Thank you very much. Hope you have had your morning coffee. It's good to see that we have um, participants from all over the world. We have attendees from Indonesia. Thank you so much for joining us in Malaysia. I saw some of my friends from Australia. Seventy two participants at the moment. Uh, we shall start in another five minutes while waiting for the attendees to join. I hope that's all right. Good morning, everyone who just joined. Uh, we are still waiting for our attendees to join the session. So some are in the waiting room. We are also streaming live on our YouTube channel, Fox CMMS. If you would like to 
watch it live, you can go to our YouTube channel. We have received a very um, good numbers of attendees registrations. We are expecting around 300 attendees today. And now in total, we have 84 attendees. So we will start in about two, three minutes while admitting the attendees to join us. Right, um, I think we can start now while waiting for the rest of the attendees to join. Assalamu alaikum, very good morning and hello. Thank you all for finding the time and visiting today's webinar. My name is Noor Azia Kiyund and I am the co-founder of Infinity FM Sindam Rahad. And I'm also an assistant professor at Bond University of Australia. It is great to gather today to find out about the future of facilities management during this pandemic. And our notable speakers today will discuss with you on the challenges faced by facilities management and ways to overcome the adverse impacts due to this pandemic. This is a two hours webinar. We're, we're supposed to start at 10 a.m. and finish by 12 p.m. Malaysia time. And we are also now live streaming on our YouTube channel, Fox CMMS. If you have yet to register your attendance, you can do so by scanning the QR code on the screen. So please do take your time for those who have yet to register your attendance. All right. Our company, Infinity FM Syndrome Berhad, provides digital transformation consultations and solutions, specifically for smart cities, facilities, and buildings. Our experts were part of the facilities management, education, technology, and IT industries. And we combined our expertise together, not to offer only consultations, but also to aid the industry players in solving their pain points through our in-house solutions. And research is one of our fundamental pillars in all tasks that we do, and all our work is guided by facts as well as real life solutions. And Infinity Ed or Infinity Education is one of our initiatives that we started a month ago, which is to just to promote awareness among, among industry players, academics, researchers, students, and even the public about how important digital transformation is. And some of the activities that we do under this program include this webinar, our podcasts, programs, even program for kids like coding for kids and many others. Our main intention is just for knowledge exchange. And we always believe that 
the more we give, the more we gain. So before we proceed with our main agenda of the day, um, do you hear me well? You can vote on the poll on your screen. Thank you very much. I think majority can hear me well. For those who can't, uh, maybe you can try and tweak a bit your speaker or something. Right, great. Our team today is the pandemic and the future of facilities management. And again, if you have yet to register, you can scan the QR code on the screen. So the speakers that we have today for our first webinar is Associate Professor Dr. Izni Shahrizal Ibrahim. So Dr. Izni is currently the Director of Forensic Engineering Center from UTM. Our second speaker, Mr. Ame Farid Omar, he's the Managing Director of ProFM Pro Solutions in Yambrahad. And our final speaker is Mr. Zul Azhan Abubaka, our CEO and co-founder. So before we start, let me explain how you can talk to us during this webinar. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can just write them to chat. We will have Q&A session at the end of each presentation to answer your questions. And to give you an overview about the agenda for today, we will start off by Dr. Izni's talk on challenges of forensic engineering investigation during pandemic and followed by a 10 minutes Q&A session. Then we will have Mr. Ami's talk on facility management challenges during pandemic, the beginnings. Again, another Q&A session for Mr. Ami. And then lastly, we'll have Mr. Zul's talk on facilities management post-pandemic and followed by another Q&A. Towards the end of this webinar, we are going to introduce our in-house solutions, Fox, and I will be doing some important announcement towards the end of the webinar. So I hope you will stay with us until the end of the session. So let's start with our first speaker. Associate Professor Dr. Izni Shahrizal Ibrahim, or Dr. Izni, has a bachelor degree in civil engineering from UTM Malaysia in 1998. He joined UTM as a tutor and completed his master's in structural engineering from UTM in 2000. He was then appointed as lecturer before he pursued his doctoral degree in the United Kingdom. And once he completed, he joined UTM as a senior lecturer in 2009. He was an uh, associate professor since 2017 uh, at School of Civil Engineering, Faculty of Engineering, UTM. And he is currently the Director of Forensic Engineering Center, Institute for Smart Infrastructure and Innovative Construction, UTM, since April 2018. He involved in lots of research work, consultation, seminar training in order to support the industry. At the same time, he's a quality manager at Civil Engineering Testing Unit under the School of Civil Engineering, UTM. His current research interests revolve around the area of precast concrete construction, composite action behavior and precast structure, steel fiber imposed concrete, forensic engineering investigation, and up to date, he has published more than 100 technical papers in journals and conference proceedings. So over to you, Dr. Disney. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Azi, uh, for the introduction of myself, okay, a short brief of myself. So without further ado, I think I will start off uh, my, uh, my, my, my talk uh, uh, on the topics on uh, okay, uh, challenges of forensic engineering investigation during the pand pandemic. So uh, as, as mentioned by uh, Dr. Azi, I basically um, uh, I started my, 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 my work in, in the uh, forensic in investigation actually since 2009, okay, uh, after completing my PhD. And my first project, uh, which involved uh, failures of structures, is uh, 
uh, I think everyone knows about the the collapse of uh, roof of the, the 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 stadium in Terengganu. Okay, the famous stadium in Terengganu. So that was my first uh, direct involvement uh, with uh, the failure of the structures uh, due to the collapse of the roof structure in the stadium. Eh? So uh, today I will basically um, share a bit okay on uh, what we have experienced uh, since. Uh, we involved directly with the forensic uh, investigation. So under my, my team, we have about five uh, fellow, okay, research fellow, which involved directly uh, with the investigation. And also each fellow have different area okay, of, of expertise. So we have fire, uh, who is expert uh, in fire, which is Dr. Aida, and then we have Dr. Nabila, which is expert in building assessment. And then also we have uh, Dr. Karo Azman, which is on vibration of structures. And then we have also Dr. Ma, okay, which is on uh, uh, I would say is on uh, repair of structures. Okay, and then finally we have Dr. Azrin. Okay, he directly involved the, with the metric investigation of failure of structures. So if, before we go into detail on um, uh, our uh, experience on uh, consultation work on uh, forensic engineering, uh, just to let you know the difference between uh, uh, first facilities management and also forensic engineering. How does this relate between one and the other? So if you look at the definition of forensic engineering, uh, you're talking about um, litigation process. Okay, litigation process, you're, you're talking about uh, the, the cause of accidents, okay, uh, and the cause of failures of structures, uh, or, or not even structures, but uh, buildings, okay, bridges, uh, or even uh, uh, silos and so on. So all these are related to uh, failures of the structures okay so when you're talking about the relationship between the facilities management that we are talking today and also forensic engineering i would say that there is interrelation between the two okay for instance if you're talking about uh, facilities management you're talking about functionality comfort safety and also efficiency of the build okay of the building or even the structures whereas when you're talking about uh, forensic engineering actually all this functionality comfort safety are related to science engineering methodologies. Okay, so you cannot run away from one of it. Okay, so meaning that if you're going for facilities management, it also involves directly or indirectly in terms of forensic engineering. Okay, so uh, okay, so for instance, if you look uh, at, at the, 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 the scope of, foreign, uh, of, of facilities man uh, management, you're talking about operation and maintenance. Okay, also you're talking about uh, sustainability, you're talking about occupants comfort, uh, comfort, and also you're talking about space management. Okay, and also you're talking about repair and renovation. I think when you, when you talk about repair and renovation, there's a lot of issues in Malaysia re related to building repair and also renovation. Okay, so if you are under, uh, how do I say, if you are under local authorities, okay, you have to get uh, approval, okay, uh, and let's say for the building owner, you have to get approval for the local authorities if you want to do any kind of repair or renovation work okay so you have if you look into detail this process okay is it okay is it comply with the one that that, that, that is uh, uh, required by the local authorities so this has to be done uh, i would say accordingly okay so uh, so you, you're talking about uh, facilities okay and also forensic so i would i would relate this uh, if you look into I, ifma uh, website okay you can uh, divide this into six area of uh, uh, facilities management. You're talking about uh, social housing and support. You're talking about technologies, okay, which is related to IoT and so on. You're talking about also health and safety. I think people now talking about uh, six how uh, six uh, how six syndrome, okay, uh, or six six how syndrome, eh, where it involves a lot of um, how the the, the 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 occupants, okay, are uh, Okay, uh, uh, living in in that building. Okay, how comfort is that the occupants living in 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 the certain building? Okay, and then you're also talking about recruitment and training. Okay, which we are, I would say that we are directly involved. Okay, to educate people in terms of uh, how to do forensic engineering investigation. Okay, and then also we're talking about empowerment. Okay, maintenance and so on. So out of these six area, okay, I would say okay based on I would say that uh, based on our um, area of forensic engineering, it is mostly related to maintenance. Okay, so for instance, if you look at both pictures, okay, the top picture is, is the one that I mentioned earlier, uh, the, the collapse of the uh, roof, uh, uh, roof, okay, uh, in the Stadium Terengganu, 
okay, which occurs uh, somewhere in 2000, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in 2009, okay. So during that time, uh, okay, there was a lot of issues, this one. Uh, okay, and then uh, the, 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 uh, the recent one, okay, uh, which is, uh, I would say this is a tourist attraction, okay, somewhere in Johor, okay, uh, which is under uh, Irda, okay, so if you look under Irda, so this is also a big issue because this is under, under the, which is quite a popular tourist attraction in Johor Bahru, uh, but due to the lack of maintenance, okay, so you can see that the safety of the structures, especially they are using timber, okay, it's not there anymore. Okay, so these are the two, I would say, most uh, <clears throat> mostly are related to the maintenance of uh, the structure itself, okay. Okay, so, uh, okay, again, okay, so when we look into the uh, Building Act, okay, so Building Act, uh, if you look into uh, the Building Act, okay, so we have actually our own Building Act, um, uh, Act 133, yeah, okay, uh, which is under Section 85A, it mentions uh, on the requirements of having uh, I would say having um, regular inspection, okay, uh, on the, the 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 maintenance or even the the the, the safe uh, safety of the, the building itself, okay. So if you look into all, there's a lot of issues on uh, uh, news, newspaper clipping, okay, related to um, deterioration of structures, okay. So for instance, I think uh, recently we have a problem on. Uh, uh, where we have cracking on uh, Taman Kramat, eh? okay, uh, flat in Taman Kramat and so on. Eh? And then, uh, so I think in 2015 and 16, okay, there was a, a failure of um, structures, okay, on, on one of the shop houses in Puko. Okay, but this is actually, the, the, the failure is not related to uh, maintenance, but due to poor, I would say, poor uh, monitoring by, by, by the, the building owner. Okay, uh, so these are some of the example where uh, we have to go forward in terms of uh, building inspection. Okay, uh, we, we, we can make it as, a, I would say, a requirement, okay, uh, at a certain intervals, okay. So now if you look at section uh, 85A, okay, in building at 133, okay, if you go into detail, okay, sorry, this is in Malay, eh, so I just put it in Malay. So if you look in, 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 the, in the building app, okay, it mentions okay, uh, that the building, okay, especially building which is uh, five story and above. Okay, so I would, I would consider this as medium height building. Okay, so uh, it has to be checked. Okay, if, you, if you look here, it has to be checked at every 10 years. Okay, so meaning that at, uh, once the building receives their CCC, okay, so that means at every 10 years, uh, you have to have a regular checking on this I would say this uh, integrity of the building. Okay, so uh, in terms of the uh, of the, the the I would say the empowerment of the local authorities, it depends on the local authorities of the state itself. Okay, so for instance, I give you DBKL; they have their own uh, requirements in doing their their their, their inspection, and also uh, in Penang. Okay, uh, during that uh, during our meeting uh, in two thousand nineteen. Okay, they make it compulsory. Okay, for for a uh, building owner to have inspection, regular inspection of every ten years. Okay, because they have this. Uh, they follow the act made by by the, by, by, by 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 KPKT. Okay, this one. Okay, and then if you look also into detail on the building act. Okay, in the next uh, in the next in the next section. Okay, it mentioned also uh, that um, the inspection should be done. Um, the basic inspection should be done by visual. Okay, but when you talk about visual, okay, these are the challenges that we are facing every time when we do uh, BCA or we call as building condition assessment. Okay, so I will share a bit on our experience on how to uh, train um, inspector when, when uh, I will call this a building inspector, okay, uh, when, when they want to do a uh, visual inspection of the, the, the building uh, uh, of the building itself, okay. Because you did, did, did in, in the video, they mentioned uh, all. Uh, uh, investigation or inspection must be done visually. Okay, so if you look into the process um, governed by by DBKL, okay, so they have a, 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 a very strict process on carrying out the inspection. Okay, so if you look into the uh, the process, okay, the flowchart, you can see that I would say that I I will divide this into two stages. Okay, so the first stage involves visual inspection report. Okay, but in order, okay, to have a good visual inspection report, you have to have 
I would say um, a very thorough experience okay in doing uh, the inspection uh, and also if you ask me okay uh, or, or my team we have to have a very sharp eyes okay to detect what are the the, the defects okay and what are the rating of the defects okay uh, so i will share this later in terms of the rating and so on okay so these are the process so th that, that's the process so once you you come up with the the the, the rating okay so it is it is it is either okay the bidding is safe or you have to go for the second stage so the, for the second stage you have to do some sort like uh, what we call a structural investigation report so this will involve a small amount of uh, uh, data so meaning that you have to get some sample back okay bring back to the lab doing some testing and and that will conclude okay that will conclude the whole thing of your uh, investigation okay to back up your, your your visual inspection report okay so these are the process so once the process is done then it's either okay uh, okay the bidding you can you can declare the bidding as safe or unsafe okay so these are the two categories okay so in in, in doing challenges of bca okay uh, based on 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 our experience okay we we can divide this into four uh, challenges okay the first is we're talking about the cost Okay, of the, to the bidding owner when doing the the, the 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 inspection. Okay, when when you are doing any inspection of uh, the bidding condition assessment, it depends on uh, uh, the cost to the bidding owner. Okay, the second is related to uh, architecture and also uh, structural drawing. Okay, uh, this is the, the the main problem when you are doing BCA. Okay, or you are doing inspection, it is very hard to get a drawing. Okay, uh, from the owner of the building. Okay, the third one is uh, time consuming. Okay, if you do it manually, okay, it is very time consuming. Okay, and then finally, you're talking about the area of percentage that need to be covered. Okay, uh, so these are our challenges. So let's say if you have uh, a 20 story head building, okay, are you going to cover the whole area of the building? Okay, so or you are covered a certain percentage of the building. Okay, maybe thirty percent, forty percent. So how how you come up with the thirty percent and forty percent area that needs to be covered? Okay, so these are the challenges during pandemic when you look at it. Okay, uh, so you're talking about about money, you're talking about the area because when you are doing investigation, okay, in in especially in high rise building, okay, the challenges is can, are you allowed to enter that building? Okay, during during the the, the pandemic session. Eh? So based on this. Okay, so when you're looking, say I give you one example in terms of uh, our, our school project in uh, somewhere in Sabah. So if you look here, you can see that there's a lot of deterioration in the building. Okay, so when we do is when, when we do this manually, normally we have a form that you have to fill in the form, and then from the form you will come up with the rating. So for instance, you have rating of one to five, okay, for for uh, the condition, and also for maintenance, also you have the rating of one to five. Okay, so based on these two rating, okay, this rating is given by GKR specification. Okay, you have to come out what we call as level of priority. Okay, so if your level of priority goes for, for the the the, uh, uh, the number of twenty five, which is the the red color or even the yellow color, that means you can consider this as either you repair the uh, the, the structures, okay, or the building, or okay, you come out with the replacement. But the issues, the challenges when doing this manually, okay, is is uh, is to get a consistent a consistent uh, rating. Okay, so for instance, a different inspector, okay, different investigation will have different rating identification. Okay, so that's why, okay, if you come up with this, okay, if you come up, uh, uh, when we do this kind of investigation, so we decided, okay, previously we do it manually. So during the pandemic, okay, we come up with a system, okay, where you can uh, do it, do it, uh, uh, I mean, you can just uh, take take a photos from, from your, either your mobile phone, okay, or even your, 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 your camera okay and then you can just transfer this into the uh, the system and then the system will auto detect the rating of the defects okay so that means when you have this the system will be uh, i would say consistent throughout the, 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 the defect rating because this is important okay because i, I have this experience before okay with, with other engineers okay so when they come up with the rating when we look at it okay different uh, people will have different uh, rating uh, identification Okay, so why not we make it uh, consistent during the pandemic? So during the pandemic, okay, there's a lot of issues relating to this. So we have to make it consistently uh, available to, to 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 all the inspectors. Okay, so this is uh, one one thing that you can that, that we, we are trying to 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 come up. 
when we integrate okay the online and also the cloud system into one system eh? okay and the second is uh, either okay when you're doing uh, your your investigation you can also use drone drone, uh, drone technologies okay so for instance uh, uh, let's say if you have a building okay uh, as as shown in the in, in in this in this figure you can see that if you are inspector okay you might not be that safe okay to enter the building because we don't know okay it can collapse anytime so what we can do in order for us to, to, to check whether the integrity is still okay or not, so we can use drone technology and then from drone from the, the drone technology we can we can visualize the whole okay structures of the building. Okay, in fact, from here also we can also measure how much is the movement of the building. Okay, so from here, okay, then you will know okay whether the building is not safe, okay, or it can be repaired later. Okay, we are, so these these are the challenges that we can do. Okay, uh, before uh, uh, the pandemic and after the pandemic. Okay. Okay. Another thing that we've done also, okay, is is, is actually uh, using a three D laser scanner. So previously, when we measure uh, a, a movement of a building, okay, like so, this is this is a building, uh, okay, uh, showing a, a, a terrace house. So the terrace house is is moving, okay, a, a vertical movement. So what we do is that, okay, uh, previously we measure this manually. Okay, uh, uh, using uh, using a uh, manual uh, 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 measurement. Okay, but uh, because of date of of uh, some issues related to a uh, uh, pandemic and also you cannot enter the building and so on. So we decided to measure the building from outside of the perimeter. Okay, so using a three D scanner also you can use this. But the problem with the three D scanner is I would say uh, this three D scanner and also the drone uh, challenge. The 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 the, 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 the the challenges in doing uh, investigation using drone and also using uh, 3D scanner is the battery life. That's the challenges. Okay, so whether we can make make it a, a longer battery life. So it depends on the the, the, the facilities that we have. Okay, in terms of the bat, bat, uh, I would say uh, uh, battery technologies. Okay. So uh, lastly, it's related also to uh, let's say even if there's a crack. So if you look at the last picture that I've shown. Okay, previously what we do is that uh, we measure the the crack manually so that means you have to go there let's say uh, monitoring a, a crack let's say throughout the six month time okay so now what why okay instead of using this manually okay our planning in the future is to integrate this okay by by uh, automated so meaning that you can use uh, optical fiber fiber okay which is currently i would say a new area of study okay uh, using optical fiber to 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 uh, to check the crack detection uh, it's been applied uh, previously in a tunnel, okay, in a, in the tunnel. So that means in the tunnel you have a, a a lot of movement there, okay, due to the movement of the soil and so on. So we can also check the movement of the tunnel itself, okay. Uh, and also you can also develop your own sensors, okay. For instance, uh, one technology has been developed uh, by 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 a, a, a university in in German, okay. Uh, so they, they they develop their own sensors. And currently, we are working together with uh, one of our partner university in Korea. Okay, in trying to develop a sensor uh, to detect uh, the, the the changes in the material of the concrete itself. Okay. So uh, okay. So another area that you that we can also look into is what we call as structural health monitoring. I think this is the one that uh, Dr. Aziz shown previously in the slides. Okay, where you have a cloud system. Okay, where you can integrate the whole okay system uh, into one uh, database. Okay, but the, the 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 challenges in doing your uh, HSM okay or we call it structural health monitoring is uh, applying sensors. Okay, so where 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 is the location that that is suitable to 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 locate the sensors? Okay, what are the type of sensors? How much does it cost? So all this involve a lot a lot of uh, area that you can cover. Okay, but this is a good area in the future okay i think they, they they have they have applied this before in uh, the second pinnan bridge okay uh, they have they they they, they, already, they already applied this in the second pinnan bridge okay okay so currently we are also doing one uh, project with smart tunnel okay in kl so we are trying to uh, develop a system uh, uh, to monitor the the health monitoring of the tunnel in the smart tunnel okay but uh, this the, the one that we are monitoring is not the the the, the road tunnel this is for the waterway tunnels uh, tunnel eh? So we are, we are not looking into the, the road waste tunnel. Okay, so these are the few system that, that you can develop uh, between uh, the industry and also you, the, the universities. Okay. Okay, so I think that's it from, from me.
Okay, so uh, if you have any question, you can ask uh, uh, during the session, or you can ask later. Okay, uh, okay, through 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 my uh, through, through through the website, and also through our our Facebook. Okay, so I pass back uh, my 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 presentation to uh, our organizer, Dr. Azi. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Izni. It's a very uh, informative presentation. So uh, we will now proceed with a Q&A session. Uh, we have some questions asked by the audience here, Dr. Izni. Okay. So the first question we have from Mr. Hignesh. Uh, Hi, doctor. Is there any regulation in Malaysia to determine soil subsidence or sinking level acceptable limit? And that's one question. Any more question? Yes. Uh, Another question is um. Sorry, let me just. From Mr. Chris, do you agree that inspection is important, but why is enforcement is weak? Okay. And the third one: What is the best solution for forensic engineering during pandemic? Because we need to follow the SOP. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for all the question. Okay. So you're talking about soil subsidence. If you ask me at the moment, there is no, uh, uh, I would say, uh, uh, a limit. Okay. In terms of uh, 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 our 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 limitation on the soil subsidence, eh? uh, I would say that in Malaysia we we are still a lacking in terms of the code of practice. Okay. So that's the main issues. So we we, we are still relying on a uh, code of practice uh, made by. By, by, I mean, from, from the UK or even from the Europe. Okay, uh, so uh, if you ask me, the first one uh, is quite tricky, that one, the question, okay, because at the moment we don't have any kind of limitation in terms of uh, the sub -sub 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 subsidence. <clears throat> okay, in terms of the second question by Chris, okay, uh, I would say that inspection is very important. Uh, I've seen this a lot, lah, okay, uh, because of poor maintenance and also. Uh, in terms of uh, renovation, because in Malaysia, if you if you if you're talking about uh, about building in Malaysia, uh, I don't know. Maybe this is a common uh, a, a common uh, uh, practice uh, or practice or even a common uh, attitude by Malaysian where where they like to do renovation in terms of housing. Okay, so uh, if you do a renovation, normally uh, it, it is supposed to also involve inspection. So this is one one one. What I would say one area that um, which is we are still lacking lah. Okay, so if you ask me, inspection is very important because we don't know in the future uh, okay, any changes to the building okay, uh, 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 might, might, might happen. Okay, I'll give you one example. Um, okay, during the design stage of the building, okay, normally we have a certain amount of life load or even variable action on that particular building. But when the building is completed, there might be changes okay, to the area of the building. Okay, let's say from uh, 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 let's say from a classroom, okay, and then they, 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 they renovate this into a laboratory. So I would say that the life load changes. So that's why that's why regular inspection is very important. From that, that you will know, okay, whether there is a changes on the life load and so on of the whole building. Okay, uh, in terms of the third question, okay, on the best solution, uh, okay, this is quite tricky at the moment. Okay, um, uh, currently, uh, uh, okay, um, for, for us, okay, I mean for, for our center, uh, we have three project, uh, three project that, 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 that currently which is on hold, okay, due to the pandemic. <clears throat> okay, uh, the reason is that um, uh, because of the MCO lah, okay, that meaning that we are not allowed to cross the border, the state. <clears throat> okay, even though, uh, okay, I would say that uh, uh, we can get, uh, uh, I would say, a permit, okay, by by, by authority. Uh, but again, okay, it, 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 okay, when you do inspection, it not involve one person. Okay, it may involve like ten percent doing the inspection. Okay, so uh, it's quite challenging if you ask me. But uh, by hook by crook, okay, it depends on uh, the 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 the, uh, the I would say not the requirement lah, but the urgency of doing the inspection. Okay, so meaning that if the agency is is there, okay, so that means I would say that it has to be done by hook by crook. It has to be done. But again, okay, it involves a lot of uh, uh, of uh, of, of of SOP, so that's why uh, when you look in, into my presentation, uh, in in the the, the 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 coming years, okay, we plan that, okay, uh, uh, okay, uh, we, we 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 are planning so that the inspection can be done. I would say not fully automated, but at least we can have like fifty percent at automated. 
Okay, so that means we can we can reduce the amount of of inspector or, or even engineers or even uh, uh, I would say uh, uh, inspectors in, on site. Okay, so this this is this is our plan. We, we cannot we cannot move towards hundred percent. Okay, but we can go okay a step by step in in, in order for us to move uh, from from manual into semi automatic and then we go into fully automatic system. Okay. Um, Dr. Izni, uh, sorry to interrupt. So, um, Mr. Chris mentioned that uh, he actually agree, and but he just think that why the enforcement is weak. So, I believe that you have managed to answer his question. Sorry, Mr. Chris, because we disabled the uh, microphone for all the attendees. Okay. Uh, we have another one question, Dr. Izni, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, is there any multiple criteria to assess level of criticality of an asset from Mr. Hazli? Uh, they're talking about asset. Um, uh, you, uh, in terms of criticality, uh, there should be. Okay, if you ask me, uh, but at the moment, uh, in terms of the level, we are still uh, in, in UTM. Uh, we have a team, okay, uh, under Dr. Nabila, okay, uh, where she is looking into the, the, the level of criticality. So at the moment, uh, uh, since there is no, no proper guideline, Okay, especially in Malaysia. Okay, I'm sure that there are proper guidelines. Uh, okay, uh, in 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 other countries, but in Malaysia we still lack. So we are looking into that into detail. Uh, but at the moment, our 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 study is basically we are focusing at the moment is only the criticality of asset in the universities alone. Okay, and only only in the public universities. But once we we come up with a detailed level of criticality, I think we can explore this later to other buildings. <coughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Isni. Um, sorry that we have to move forward with the next speaker. Uh, perhaps um, I can channel the other questions to Dr. Isni's email straight away after this webinar, or we can stay for a while at the end of this webinar. Thank no you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Isni. So let's move forward. So our second speaker is Mr. Ami Farid Omar. So Mr. Ami Farid Omar, who's a Master of Asset and Facilities Management from UTM and previously graduated Bachelor in Electronic and Electrical Engineering from the UK. He's currently the Principal of Facility Management Consultant at ProFM Solutions in Yambrahad. Having vast experience in FM since 1995, Mr. Ami is also a CIDB Certified Trainer for Sijil Kecekapan Pengurusan for registration of F01 facilities management and he is actively participating in research and his research interests revolve around the area of FM as well as asset management. So Mr. Ami, the floor is yours. Hi everyone, and good morning. Thank you very much uh, to Dr. Azia. Uh, let me share slide for one. Okay. I will cover the facility management challenges during pandemic, which actually I'm referring to one of my uh, real case study, which uh, I'm managing uh, one of the universities in Malaysia. So, uh, and uh, what we have experienced for the last almost one and a half years uh, during pandemics. Eh? All right, we all know that the pandemic starts since uh, in China since December, 2019, and in Malaysia, uh, the MCO 1.0 started in March last year, 2020, right? So uh, since then, uh, it has been uh, the awareness of the pandemic become uh, 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 emphasized in Malaysia. Right? And then uh, we thought it's going to, to over in a couple of months, but it's not. And, and then the MCO 2.0 continues in January, 2021. And now we are facing a MCO 3.0 back to the lockdown from June 2021 until now. We don't know how long it will last. All right. So these are among the challenges that we face. All right. Uh, we have, because of this pandemic uh, in facility management, especially in the operation and maintenance, uh, we have an additional important scope. It has become very important scope of work. Uh, 
we have the and and actually it's interrelated. The challenges is interrelated because we have additional scope of work. Then it contributes to the additional cost. And and for a contractor, not usually in Malaysia, some of the service facility management is outsourced. So when they outsource, meaning they have a service provider, they have a contract signed. So it's become a contract dilemma between the two parties, right? Who's going to do for the job, right? We'll cover that in details later on. And uh, and, and it's still become the uncertainty yeah, on, on how long it's going to last. Let's look into the challenge number one, which is the additional scope, right? Definitely we have to do the disinfection activities. Okay, so uh, Uh, in Malaysia, we have the guidelines eh, for, uh, released by the uh, Ministry of Health. Sorry, this is in Malay, but it, it is from the Ministry of Health. Eh? They have given the disinfection guidelines, how we can do the disinfection at the public areas. Right? So we are following, we can take these guidelines uh, if we want to execute the job. right? And also uh, produced by uh, Jabatan Bombo and Plamat, which is the, the uh, fire fire department. Eh? Okay, the, the guidelines say that uh, we have to use a, a proper PPE, which is uh, supposed to be safe and suitable. Eh? Right, for example, like the face mask, eh? the disposal glove, uh, and the apron, and, and there's uh, some more uh, uh, like, like a boot and so on and so forth, it depends on the suitability. And then we have to do some uh, PPE management on that, right? It has to be disposed. When you dispose, you have, you have to make sure it is disposed properly you, because it is, uh, you, are, you are dealing with this pandemic and we don't want, we don't want uh, you, because of your uh, poor management, you might eh, uh, cause uh, another problems. And it has to be renewed daily. Yeah? So it, it, it involves a, a kind of management in terms of managing the PPE itself. This is some of the example from the guidelines, yeah? which is uh, we, we have to use the, oh, sorry again, for, for, for those from the, from the uh, overseas, yeah? it is Malay, but I will read for you, it is, it is a glove, eh? uh, sarung tangan getah, or you have the mask, eh? which is, we have to, there's a specification for that. And then you have the apron, eh? which can cover your body, or, and you have the boots, eh? and, uh, and you can even add on with the gloves and the long sleeve gowns eh? to make sure you are well protected when you are uh, doing the job. And then the... You also need uh, the kits and equipment. Eh? For example, like the, if inside the building or outside the building, inside the building, you might need the spray can. You need the, 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 the cloth. Being, of course, the water and the, 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 yeah, the like the mist blower, the portable jet, maybe high, high pressure portable jet. Uh, and, uh, and uh, also the tailgate. Yeah? All right, uh, when we look into the method, eh, how that, that, uh, there is a guideline on how we can uh, 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 use the solution eh, uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, what we call that, uh, uh, the mix, eh? uh, how many percent that you might use. Actually, it depends on the uh, different type of solution as well. Eh? This is some of the guide. Yeah, actually, in the market, there are certain uh, different products that, uh, that then you have to follow the, the, the guideline. But this is uh, at least some minimum eh? to make sure it is not too uh, too light. Eh? You, want, you want to make sure when you do this fish, it has to be effective. Eh? This is some of the other example in preparation of the disinfectant uh, with uh, the sodium hypochlorite. Eh? You can see the, the recommendation uh, how you want to, uh, to use eh? in, in, in the wiping, for example, or in the general cleaning. Eh? And well, uh, as well as uh, the method, eh? you they have uh, two types. Eh? One, either you wipe and mop, eh? for example, you are mopping the floors. You have to cover eh, almost all the areas, or you have to wipe. Eh? You have to wipe everything, eh? the, the, even the equipment, eh? 
the furniture, uh, even the walls, the doors, the windows, eh? everything you have to cover. And all you can use a spray. Eh? You can just uh, use the spray, and then you you, you can have a uh, you can cover a bigger area. And then you can uh, uh, do it in, whether the inside the building, yeah? uh, mopping or spraying, or outside the building. Eh? Outside usually we we more on uh, spraying uh, because uh, it is usually involve the infrastructure and. Uh, spray method is more suitable for the outside of the building. All right, and then the, how frequent that we have to do? That is another uh, another thing that we have to think of. It can be done either one off, right? Meaning for the area which is uh, rarely used or maybe not not so much in, but for the first time, you have to use it. You have to, you have to do it then for the one off uh, uh, the disinfection. Or uh, when you have the case, eh? when you have certain area, it is uh, you have a case of positive COVID-19, then the whole building or the whole uh, premises need to be uh, to do it at, at least one off eh? sanitization. And it, and for an area which is uh, always have the users, it's around, eh? you, it is being being used. You have to you have to have a routine. Eh? For example, uh, like the hotel or the uh, or the a residential area uh, where you have the users apartment for example then uh, you are using the leaf uh, you are using the, the facilities then you have you, you need to have a, a quite a frequent routine uh, to make sure it is done and it is covered the sanitation is covered and the tenants uh, are, are the user or the public around that is uh, are, are safe uh. So it could have a daily or even twice daily or even hourly, depending on the on the criticality of the facilities. For example, the leaf, the leaf might be hourly uh, uh, done on uh, sanitized and uh, on the leaf button because it's frequently being touched. And uh, that's for example. So you have to be you have to decide uh, which which area need to be done uh, and, and how frequent need to be done. Uh. All right, and then uh, there's a challenge number one. It is it it gets, it, has, it has cost us it has um, additional co additional works. Eh? It increased uh, additional work uh, to the uh, operational maintenance and facility management. Challenge number two. It's related when you have the additional works. Mean it is a, it is a additional cost to us. And the issue is uh, you look at the cost. Eh? The inspection materials, the kit, the tool and equipment. Eh? And then we look at the PPE, it is disposable, we have to replace uh, now and then, and also the labor cost and the, the, the who is going to do it. Eh? So the, this is the cost eh, that, the, that we have to bear, the additional cost that uh, everyone has to do it. Eh? Right from uh, even the, the building owner or even for the uh, municipal city, they have to do it for the uh, public areas. So this example, eh? it is not cheap. Eh? The cost is uh, quite uh, significant. Eh? Uh, it's about 15 cents per square feet. If you see, this is one of the example of the uh, advertisement, eh? about 15 cents per square feet. Out there, uh, when I search the market, the cheapest we can get is about 10 cents for in inside building, 10 cents per square feet. And uh, so you just imagine uh, that uh, additional cost that you have to bear if you have the facilities, right? So. It is sometimes even expensive, more expensive than the, your normal cleaning works. Eh? So it brings to the, the third challenges and eh? the, the dilemma of the contract. Eh? Because when you have the additional costs, who should bear this cost? Eh? So the, if you have the contract, the building owners and, and, the, and the contractor service providers start to, to talk about it, eh? who should bear this cost? So uh, in Malaysia, actually, a lot of the contract and the service provider, they are always started with the goodwill. Right? So when it started uh, back in March 2020, I believe a lot of service provider are willingly uh, take it for CSR, for example. Right? For the, so hoping that or uh, thinking it might last, uh, it could last in just a few weeks, maybe one couple of months, uh, one or two months, okay, we can absorb the cost. And so they just absorb you know, and they just get it done. Eh? But later on, it's still drag eh? until if you see the pandemic is still uh, uh, is still around us, uh, and it's still we still don't know uh, when it's going to last. 
and it's every more than a year now. So it's become a, a big issue, right? a big challenges to the contract management and on, on uh, uh, who is supposed to bear this cost. Right? It's going to be the additional cost. Uh, and then the, the cost is, uh, is quite a lot. Right? It's very significant as we have seen the, 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 the cost behind it. Uh, what are, the, are those items that uh, we have to uh, provide? Right? And then not only the cost, eh, but contractually it's about the liability. Yeah? So when you are paid to do the job, it become a liability yeah, to make sure you have done it properly and you have the quality and how you your in investment management. Eh, it's not only about doing the job; you have to do the job correctly. Yeah? Um, and in, in terms of all the uh, in, uh, uh, facility management aspect, in terms of the quality, in terms of performance, in terms of the safety uh, operation. The process, so on and so forth. Right? So, having said that, we are still uh, uncertain. Eh? No one can actually certain certainly tell when it can last. Eh? So, the pandemic could end up with endemic, and this is one of the opinion. Eh? Even we have we able to control. We have now vaccinate vaccine vaccinate uh, all the, uh, uh, the people, and and but. It could end up with endemic. And pandemic, we know it is spread all over the world now, but, but it may end up with endemic. Endemic means we have to live with it. We might, yeah? we might uh, live with it. For example, like uh, in Malaysia, we have the dengue case. Uh, dengue is endemic. Yeah? It's still around us, and we still have to face and live with it. We have to manage it, and throughout our our day to day operation. Yeah? So when it becomes the endemic, meaning we have to live with it. It will become a permanent scope. It will end up uh, additional cost eh, to to facility management, either the owner, building owner, or even the service provider. We have to start thinking about it. in those days we we could uh, having the cleaning service, for example, or other things like uh, landscaping and uh, MNE. Now we have another one, eh, sanitize sanitization. We have to do the uh, disinfection. Eh, it's part of the uh, forever scope. So it's become what we call a new norm, right? uh, like the cleaning services that we, we, we may have to consider in the future. So as a conclusion, eh, for sure, the civilization exercise is very important activity during this pandemic, and uh, FM should play an important role. Right? Uh, not only just doing the, actually when we talk about the FM, it's not only just doing the operation and do the inspection from now and then, it has to be strategically planned, huh? the implementation, and we have to consider all the aspects of the integrated facility management. Meaning when we do this exercise, we have to start thinking about the process. It has to be, uh, we have to start thinking about the, the performance, huh? the KPI, what we can achieve. In, from the safety aspect, about the compliance of the statutory, maybe we need to have certain standard, eh, certain standard to follow, so that we to make we have to make sure when we do the job, uh, we comply to certain standard, and uh, at the end of the day, we should be able to measure the performance. Eh? Should have KPI, should just have some mechanism eh, to do it uh, properly. And for example, when we talk about the frequency, how frequent. Now at the moment, it is uh, uh, depending on the uh, uh, service provider themselves or the building owner as and when they think they have to do it, right? But uh, at, uh, in the near future, I mean, the, the, the industry has, must start eh, thinking about it. We have to, uh, if it become our new norm, uh, we have to think that this exercise, eh, the, the sanitization will become our, uh, our uh, our day-to-day -day, uh, activity yeah, that we have to uh, consider. Uh, I think that's all. It's quite fast, one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ami. Thank you, Ami. So now uh, we open for Q&A question. So we have some questions, Ami, for you. Let yes. me just read. Um, okay, so yang first ni tak ada nama. It's just a dot. Encik Ami merujuk kepada Safety and Health OSHA 94 pekerja yang terdedah dengan 
chemical disinfection process perlu buat medical surveillance adakah ini dikira dalam operation and maintenance okay. soalan yang kedua how the authorities make sure that all fm company adhere with all this new requirement by farhana and another question by farhana new requirement and processes affect the quality of service Sorry, can can you repeat doctor, doctor? the second or the third one the second one because uh, that one i cannot hear just now okay the second one, second one. how the authorities make sure fm second company... one. what is the question hello can you hear me Miss Amin, yeah, can sorry, you hear me? Sorry, my mind is a bit unstable. Can okay, you repeat the second one? Yes. Hello? Hello, hello? Uh, can you repeat the second one? Because uh, my line quite quite unstable. Okay, the second yes. question. Yes. How the authorities make yeah. sure FM companies comply with all the new requirement? Okay. Okay, and the third one, does all this new requirement affect the quality of services in terms of cost and time? by the FM company. All right. The first one first. Uh, Where's the first one? Eh? Uh, sorry. The first sorry, one is what's the first OSHA, one? OSHA, uh, merujuk kepada safety and health OSHA. Pekerja yang terdedah kepada disinfection hmm. process ni perlu buat medical surveillance. Adakah ini dikira dalam operation and maintenance? Let's see. Second one, sorry. Hello, the second one. Um, second is on macam mana the FM companies ni comply, macam mana authorities nak make sure FM company comply right. dengan semua new requirement ni okay. dan yang ketiga uh, adakah new requirement ni akan affect kepada quality, cost dan time untuk uh, FM company ni. Right, thank you. Okay. The first one eh, on the the OSHA, when come to OSHA Okay, when we talk about the FM itself, eh, we we all understand we are all in the FM uh, industry. We we know that FM doesn't stop at operation and maintenance. Eh. Unfortunately, in Malaysia, in Malaysia, there are a lot of service provider. They thought when we talk about FM, they thought it is simply operation and maintenance. It is not. Eh. If you if you see my last bubble, eh, my last bubble just now, then at the conclusion where the scope of FM we cover everything. Eh. We cover. Even our safety, health, and environment, which is OSHA, is involved. That's why we, we comply with the OSH Act, so on and so forth. So when we we, we apply to the OSH, we have to follow the OSH, just like other safety and health requirement. If there is a need to add on the OSH, probably yeah, later on it can be uh, add on into the OSH requirement, and we have to follow through. All right, all right. Uh, so, uh, the question number two is about the enforcement. It is always about enforcement. We have, uh, when we have things need to be done, we have certain guidelines or acts or, 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 or certainty that we need to be done. The next thing we have to do is on enforcement. The enforcement is important eh, to make sure uh, that uh, when uh, we need to comply, then it's become a new norm in future, then we have to do it. Lah. I mean, the, the answer is, to me, is the enforcement. Lah. We have to, to put, put, make sure that uh, the enforcement is being done at all levels, eh? at the all level of the implementation, uh, right from the the authority yeah, that monitoring. There must be a mechanism, must be a process. FM is about a processes, and eh? when we have the right process, and and it also covers the statutory requirement uh, when we see the bubble. Eh? So meaning the it, it, when we do this this uh, activity, it have to maybe in future we have uh, in the statutory requirement there will be sir. Uh, body yeah, to 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 do monitor this uh, this uh, uh, need uh, just like just now when we have this uh, uh, inspection or requirement or other system inspection like electrical system uh, that may be under DOSH it can be it can be done that way right so the number three is the uh, affecting quality cost and time yeah just like we discussed now that's a challenge now it really affect the cost, for example, like the cost, uh, because there's an additional work and it is costly. Yeah? Uh, we can see that if we are talking about 10 cents per square feet, for example, in Malaysian market, it is uh, not something cheap. Yeah? It, is, uh, it, is very, it is a significant cost that, to everyone. So definitely it will affect the, the cost. And then next is the quality. 
and we we, uh, we have to uh, we have to uh, have a, a guideline eh, to what level of the quality that we we are supposed to achieve and eh? that can be uh, translated in the KPI eh? like in the performance and that's like we are doing the cleaning eh? how clean is clean right uh, that is that is depending on the the, the service level that you are expecting but of course when we come to this uh, sanitization program uh, because it is very much related to the safety and health it cannot be it has to be you must have a certain minimum standard because the purpose is to make sure that the the, the virus is is dead lah, eh? we can we can uh, we can we, the sanitization inspection is to disinfect the virus so if for example we don't do a cold, proper control uh, maybe then the other nearest one, like if we are doing the the pest control, if we pest control also, if we don't do properly, uh, we are doing the fogging, but maybe the the it doesn't kill the bugs, it doesn't kill the 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 the, the uh, uh, mosquito, eh? for example, the dengue. Uh, then then it doesn't meet the purpose. Eh? There's it's a certain minimum standard that we have to achieve. Eh? For example, in terms of the the mixing the solution that's why just now i show you the standard the standard has tell you that you have to mix certain things so that it, it, it not doesn't people don't uh, don't uh, cut corners lah, eh? and they want when it's become part of the business they want to save money so they want uh, they want to get more profit they start to cut corners and delete it uh, to light eh? and end of the day it doesn't affect eh? so it doesn't give some effect so there must be a standard when we when we mix all this uh, solution and we dilute it and make sure that uh, it works huh? so uh, of course definitely there will there will be a standard that define the quality there will be a cost for it and then we have to we have to control just like other services will become one of the scope huh? in uh, in the facility measurement operation and maintenance okay am i answering the question Uh, thank Hello. you so much, Ms. Tami. Yeah. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah I'm still here. Sorry, yeah, the line suddenly became Yeah, I think, I think it's a bit <laughs> lagging, but I think yeah. we managed to capture all those uh, um, important keywords that you mentioned. Yeah. So, um, thank you so much. Um, so, I will move to the next session, but we actually have more questions coming in, which uh, we're going to post on our LinkedIn. And Ms. Tami, maybe you can join the discussions later on. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, just one statement from Mr. Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chris, for your thoughts here, um, saying that my thoughts are that we will have to accept the virus will not disappear. So we just have to take current SOP as a norm in our life. On the question of cost, it will be the cost of doing businesses and the cost will be passed on to the consumers. Thank you, Mr. Chris, totally understood. So we'll move to the next session. Uh, our final speaker is Mr. Zul Azan Abubakar, our CEO and co-founder. Zul graduated with electrical engineering degree from UTM and currently pursuing master's in research, digitalization of facilities management in UM. He has been involved with multiple industries, facility setup and planning. Notably projects include Pinewood Iskandar Malaysia Studios and University of Reading Malaysia. He managed cross-industry facility in Malaysia and Singapore for more than 15 years, and he is now co-founded Infinity to assist organizations with their digital transformation journey, leveraging on industry experience as well as research-driven approach. Zol is also a registered energy manager, certified CIDB facility manager, and a certified IWFM member. So over to you, Zol. Thank you very much, Dr. Azi. Thanks for everyone for being here with us today. Start sharing my screen now. Okay, thank you very much everyone again. Uh, thank you for being here. Our first ever webinar it will be a long series of uh, hopefully monthly session for us, Infinity. We'll be inviting more people and more key opinion leaders to share their thoughts and insights. Thank you to Dr. Izni and Mr. Ame. They've been a good friend. Uh, they've been supporting Infinity since day one. So I'm Zul, uh, CEO and co-founder of Infinity. Today I'll be your last presenter and I'll be talking about uh, FM, post-pandemic. 
So this uh, topic alone has been uh, discussed and researched a lot. There's been debate about how FM uh, will be post pandemic, how facilities will be used and uh, how FM basically is going to be um, reacting to the changes of uh, behavior and uh, the new norm, the new normal. So I'll be sharing a bit of uh, thoughts, uh, touching here and there. Perhaps I'll be able to give a little bit more insight about what's uh, going to happen as predicted by experts. So as we can see, um, COVID-19 has been uh, disrupting the way we work and the way we live. So working from home has been a norm to most of us, if not everyone. Um, Previously, many employers has been reluctant to, to, to adapt this kind of uh, arrangement working from home. And uh, this uh, arrangement has, seen, has been seen as uh, a type of um, less productive uh, arrangement for workers, it seems. And now uh, video calls, virtual meets has been like uh, playing a large part of um, role in our life, uh, professional life and even personal life, especially during this lockdown we've been separated uh, from our colleagues friends and even uh, families so it begs uh, the question of whether facility and offices will be back to normal to the uh, to the pre condition the during pre pandemic do we still need offices anymore will online e-commerce uh, end the brick and mortar shops no more shopping malls no more uh, commercial lots and what will facility management do post pandemic so this um, question has been basically researched by a group of researchers from Chicago universities. <clears throat> basically, they, they had uh, around 10,000 respondents for this research. And from their uh, research, basically, it was uh, proven that working from home led to two more hours of working per day. Uh, people had more meetings, less focus time due to a lot of distractions distractions uh, from children, from neighbors knocking uh, or doing some minor renovations, food and entertainment, and less productivity overall. So in, in conclusion, I think um, people won't be uh, working from home entirely post pandemic. We still need a space uh, for people to communicate, collaborate, and um, coordinate with each other. Because from what uh, Clay Shaki mentioned, we are basically a social social creature we need each other companion we need to be in uh, present with other human beings our colleagues friends and family so there is still a need for those kind of facilities uh, pre-pandemic but how so the expectation of uh, facility management post-pandemic building usage won't change basically will still uh, serve the same purpose hospital will still be an hospital serve patients and uh, all the services airports, hotels, shopping malls, but how we use it might change. So this will also impact to the role of FM itself. Like um, Mr. Ame mentioned just now, there's a lot of new normal um, going on at the moment. Um, he basically highlighted the, the process of uh, disinfection now become a new norm. The costs increase and there's a lot of uh, new uh, so-called public health policies uh, need to be adopted by uh, FM. So all these uh, latest policy need to be um, adapted by players, building owners and facility owners. We need to be uh, aware of how this uh, mitigation of risk of, uh, for safety and health. So <clears throat> ensuring the safety and health of occupants uh, is going to be a top priority for FM. And the last one, will be the acceleration of facilities and building technologies. Both of them, uh, Dr. Izni and uh, Mr. Ame mentioned that there's a lot of uh, automation of processes need to be done uh, post pandemic. So there's a lot of changes. Uh, there's a lot of uh, technology adoption will be ongoing for FM. So uh, I touched a bit about building hygiene. Um, a lot of um, policies has been uh, written by CDC, WHO and even our on MOH, Ministry of Health, about how we want to disinfect, or how we want to assess whether the building is safe for people to come back to work again. So we need to know all this information and FM need to adapt this kind of um, new policies 
and update all those uh, people that is working on this uh, team. So apart from building hygiene, ventilation is uh, one of the major elements that's been discussed by WHO, CDC, and even KKM. And um, there's a lot of uh, new policies, uh, guideline uh, being released at the moment. Uh, we need to be aware about um, the risk of indoor infections is more higher than outdoors because of this viral, uh, the concentration of viral particles uh, for indoor environment. So how do we identify all these conditions? Do we need to assess it regularly? Uh, how the processes of uh, identifying certain standards? So what are the tools needed for all these kind of uh, new standards? So <clears throat> apart from that, the acceleration of uh, technology for building operations is not unique only to FM. So uh, it was mentioned by Professor Sergio from Kellogg School of Management. The pandemic has accelerated a lot of uh, digital transformation, the rise of e-commerce, increase of adoption to virtual meets, uh, telemedicine and online teaching. And McKinsey Research Institute also agree that kind of, uh, with that statement, mentioned that the world won't be back to what it was uh, pre-pandemic. So there's a lot of change of behavior. Um, the engagement to digital economy will be higher than before. And then um, it will also affect how we will be working and also learning in the future. The CEO of Microsoft mentioned that um, technology adoption has been accelerated like five years now due to the pandemic. There's a lot of uh, technology that, is, that, that has been expected to be ready by 2013 now. It's already becoming true even now. And this is uh, not unique to, N, N, uh, to FM alone. So it's, it's been uh, applied to right across the industries. You can see Asia Pacific alone uh, has seen the rise of technology adoption, like 54%, even during pandemic. And uh, post pandemic, it will see a lot of more uh, increment of technology adoption to businesses. So how do we react to this uh, in FM perspective? So post pandemic expectation for FM will be a lot. Uh, there's a lot of uh, new norm, new normal from uh, building operations, like being mentioned by Dr. Isni, the inspection for building forensic itself has been changed. We need to adopt to some kind of a new SOP. A lot of uh, sensors uh, will be installed. Uh, to replace some uh, manual processes. So these changes will take um, phases. Uh, we will take step by step. And even for building hygiene, like uh, Mr. Ame mentioned just now, uh, we need to assess uh, the condition. Uh, we need to be aware of the certain uh, codes and standards being released by the authorities. So technology connectivity will be playing uh, an important role in this. The improvement of internet connectivity for people, workplace facilities will be top priority because the flexibility of work also uh, open up the doors for people to work from anywhere. Uh, people will be virtually uh, have discussions, meeting, and uh, there's a lot of digital um, solution being used uh, in a lot of uh, organization, organization uh, right now. The traceability uh, basically um, we go back to the control of uh, or mitigation of risk for infections because we are not looking at uh, the virus to be disappear in a decade uh, as what we mentioned by the WHO. It might be an endemic. So although if, uh, the viral virus might not be posing the same threat like um, at early stage due to the vaccine, uh, but it will still be there. We'll, we'll, we FM will need to adapt to some kind of a new method, a new standard and new procedure. So efficient communication is, is really in need uh, for FM, building occupants, uh, their clients and building operators. So how do we uh, identify the new tools that uh, to make it possible for all this uh, communication, traceability and the technology uh, adoption? Deloitte uh, Research Institute is, I think, uh, the first company that announced uh, the employee will be allowed to work from anywhere. They announced it like, uh, I think, three days ago. Uh, all the employee of Deloitte is uh, allowed to work from anywhere. So this is responding to their research, uh, saying that 
Previously, everybody is talking about working from home. But now everybody is work, will be talking about working from anywhere. So office will still play a central role in this, but the behavior and nature of it will change eventually. So largely because when people working from home or anywhere, they, want, they might want to come back to office. So they has, uh, the, the employee has to apply for things like desk, perhaps hot desk, uh, parking space, and even apply for certain allowances for their traveling. So this change of behavior also will affect FM and how FM will react to this kind of a new arrangement. So there's a lot of uh, activities going on, changes, data created, and um, the, this, this behavior also will uh, have to be reacted upon by FM. So we cannot really operate on the same conventional ways uh, pre-pandemic. Going into that uh, particular area of um, strategically change uh, FM role, uh, COVID-19 uh, has been seen as uh, a leaf for FM from operational to a more strategic role now. We need to rethink again uh, the role of FM. Uh, it's not merely a operational and maintenance role, but we need to strategically uh, become a partner to all the stakeholders. We need to assess aware, uh, we need to ensure the safety and health, and we need to comply to certain standard of uh, building codes perhaps by CDC, um, WHO. This is more than uh, before where we need to follow certain codes by building um, regulators like CIDBs and, uh, or JKR or Bomber. So when we talk about technology adoption, uh, FM primarily need to assess uh, the technology adoption model. Uh, certain adoption of technology and digitalization need to be uh, audited. You need, cannot really um, come from a company where a minimum adoption of digital technology and just jump into BIM for FM. So we need to assess our uh, digitalization level. Uh, we need to see where we are at the moment and what's the best uh, framework for technology adoption for our organization. Because this back the question that uh, there's a lot of company that uh, wanted to go for digital transformation, but they don't know where to start or what are the technologies that suitable for their organization and core businesses. <clears throat> So if we look into this diagram, um, there's a lot of activities going on in this um, image alone. And this relates back to the core or primary um, role of FM, space management, fleet management, vis visitor management, ONM, even parking management, and central control of the building. So how do we manage all this uh, without certain technology adoption? How do we mitigate the risk of uh, uh, disease uh, or infections uh, post pandemic because the need is will be more than before. So as part of this, uh, I think apart from this, the improvement of user experience in the building also need to be uh, improved further because people are expecting more and more from um, building usage. So the only way to go uh, from this is to have a data driven approach for building op operations. This is a simple diagram where um, a lot of uh, businesses, uh, FM is not unique to this, uh, that adopt uh, the big data approach for their business decision. Uh, <clears throat> and in processing a lot of data, um, I think FM produced like millions of uh, key data points from activities in the building, from operation, maintenance, uh, building services, and even the occupant activities. So how do we... Uh, structure all this database. Uh, so the keyword that will be synonym to a lot of business uh, in future will be data lake. We'll be producing a lot of uh, databases, data warehouse, and it will be dumped into a big data lake where AI uh, will be used to make and assist uh, decision making. And data visualization will be more efficient because we can pick and choose all those information and analysis that relates to certain activities to make an informed decision better. <clears throat> and um, uh, I'm sharing here is uh, a simple AWS IoT services or system architecture that uh, eventually we use for our client. Uh, it has two front end which serve the FM team. 
for operational dashboard and also the other one is the tenant app that uh, eventually help uh, more uh, collaborative um, communication between the FM team and also the occupants of the building. And um, from this diagram alone, it shows that um, technology now has become more and more um, adaptive or more easier to adapt uh, to a lot of company like uh, compared to previously done. Um, it has lower cost of uh, adoptions and it's much, much easier due to the development of cloud computing uh, technologies. So <clears throat> when we talk about big data, all those data that being processed, uh, collected and processed and analyzed uh, goes back to the simple philosophy of ISASA. We ingest, we collect, we store all this data in the structured and semi-structured or unstructured uh, database. We analyze it with specific analytic tools. We surface it in a very uh, strategic dashboard. And also we act upon all those data that we have to make sure that it it can be leveraged on, it can benefit to FM and our occupants. So there'll be a lot of uh, changes in FM uh, post pandemic. We have to uh, adopt to a lot of new technologies, uh, new behavior, new code of standards for buildings. And um, there will be, I think, a lot more expectation due to the fact that flexibility of workplace um, and uh, facility uh, post pandemic. If you can see here, I'm sharing a really interesting uh, vacancy recently, like three days ago, uh, a company in Singapore started to look for digital facilities engineer. Uh, if we compare ourselves like five to 10 years ago, there won't be a vacancy like this or position like this in FM team because there'll be like a strict uh, boundaries or line between FM uh, operation and also IT. Now the line has become more blurry and gray so um, digital facilities engineer uh, will be, I think, playing a lot of uh, more important roles um, compared to this. Uh, I mean, uh, it's comparable to like uh, maintenance engineer, mechanical, mechanical engineers, or uh, the conventional facilities engineer. So we need, we, uh, FM post pandemic need to embrace this kind of changes. We need to act fast upon it uh, so that we are not left behind uh, because based on IWFM um, research recently, uh, FM is one of the less innovative industry compared to the rest of the uh, more competitive industry like uh, maybe uh, construction, even construction and um, automation, uh, autom automotive, where they spend like maybe around three to 5% of their capex for R&D and um, research, where FM generally spend around 1.5% from, from the capex. And um, before I end my presentation today, um, there's a lot of changes that uh, will happen post pandemic, but I, I quote this interesting uh, saying by George Bernard Shaw, men, men, mentioning that progress is meaningless without change. So post pandemic, there'll be a lot of uh, new normal, but uh, if we can start to a new normal, um, I don't expect us to go back to where we were, were pre-pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Zol. That is a very insightful presentation. Uh, we have some questions for you, Zol. Uh, I'll start first um, questions from Saveya Nazi. So Saveya Nazi would like to ask you about what is the um, correct number of hand sanitizing stations for the building and what is needed for IT to quickly ramp up network access and equipment for home workers. Sorry, Dr. Tazi, can you just repeat the question again? I just lost it. Okay, so the first question is how many correct number of hand sanitizing stations in the building and what are the requirements for IT to ramp up network access and equipment for those working from home? So there, there are two questions, correct? So that's the first one from uh, Saveh Nazi. Another question from Miss Myra, a student from UITM. So she would like to ask you about what are the impact of COVID-19 to FM operation, specifically for those that are being used as vaccination hub, like convention center? Okay. 
Okay, the third one is from Miss Farhana. So Miss Farhana would like to ask you about how the manpower will reflect the performance of facilities and contribute to client dissatisfaction due to the limitation of number of manpower because of retrenchment during pandemic. Okay, all right. Okay, and maybe last one, another one. What are the key factors that hindering digital adoption for FM in Malaysia? Okay, all right, thank you. So the first question was the number of hand sanitizing uh, station, is that correct? Yes, Zoe. Hello, Dr. Z. So I jumped the question a bit. Uh, maybe I can go to number two, how we want to improve the IT infrastructure at home, basically. Um, I mean, there's a lot of um, argument about internet connectivity, especially those uh, students that stay in very uh, upskirt or very rural areas. Um, this actually comes down to the policy of the government on how we, we want to give the access to the people that is not really um, exposed to this uh, connectivity. Uh, we've been working with um, state government in Johor uh, on how to address this situation actually. Uh, the, the title of this uh, project is uh, Digital Inclusivity. So the increase of um, network coverage and so on will go down to the government policies on how they want to mitigate uh, and um, actually expand the network. There's a lot of um, also um, short-term, mid-term and long-term um, approach to this. Um, I mean, uh, internet infrastructure is not really a cheap uh, project uh, to start with. But uh, I believe one day, uh, once the need has becoming like important or a need rather than an option to have, uh, sooner or later, the, the digital infrastructure will have to improve. Um, there's a lot of uh, also policy for new residential areas that's been built, should be equipped with certain uh, speed of internet, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm going back to this uh, number four, the impact of manpower uh, to FM services uh, standard. This is uh, actually an ongoing uh, problem for FM currently. Uh, if you're thinking about pre-pandemic, uh, talent retention for FM is quite, quite very difficult. It's quite tough to retain uh, talent uh, to attract new young blood to this industry because it's seen as uh, quite laborious, uh, labor intensive uh, work. But I believe the, with the interaction of uh, certain technologies adoption and changes of um, culture of work for FM will improve this kind of situation. <clears throat> and also this uh, current um, initiative by government like CDB uh, recognizing FM professionals, uh, FM executive professional will lead to this uh, more attractive um, to younger, younger um, talents coming into the, the industry. Um, the next question will be the key factors uh, that hinder the digital transformation. Like I said, people will consider about costs, um, number one, to see how much they are spending. They are afraid that the, the investment made by the company towards certain technology will be a waste uh, and they cannot really attain the acceptable return of investment. Uh, and then the talent actually uh, in their own organization. Uh, some organization, uh, organization has seen uh, internal uh, reluctance uh, to accept new technologies and new changes because of their lack understanding of the certain technology and why they are doing it. So a lot of uh, communication coming from top needed uh, for certain project in digital transformation. We've seen that digital transformation is not really about uh, technology adoption, but 
is a change of uh, structural uh, uh, approach to FM and so on. Um, did I get all this question or I missed some? Hello, Dr. Z? Zul, are you done? Sorry, I'm a bit lag. Yeah, I think I'm done. All right, uh, Zul, um, sorry, we have just one last um, question from Mr. Zainuddin. He would like me to ask these questions to you through this online session. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zainuddin, uh, for your, um, I mean, very modern mindset about technology and you believe that technology is the way forward in FM. So Mr. Zainuddin would like to ask you, what is the strategy approach that we use at Infinity so that we can balance out the value offering as business entity, when we try to compare the cost benefit that can be enjoyed by FM operator so that they can see Infinity as a business partner. Sorry, I didn't get the last sentence. Can you hear me, Zul? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't get the last uh, sentence actually, but uh, I kind of uh, get the question how we want to balance between the investment, correct? Uh, and how we want to provide value to the stakeholders of operate, client um, that we have. Yes, uh, so uh, Mrs. Aydin would like to know what's the benefit that we can offer to FM operators if they are going to be our business partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we'll look at technology adoption as uh, made to long-term investment actually um, when we approach uh, partners or client that is uh, ready to work with us for their digital transform transformation journey we look at their holistic business uh, view on how we want to work with them long term because uh, digital transformation is not really a short uh, term process it's more likely to have like made to long-term view of, uh, on this because uh, will disrupt uh, some processes we need to create some kind of awareness like i said efficient uh, communication is a need uh, top down and we need to assess the uh, so-called um, audit of the current technology adoption model that they have or any digitalization that they already have done so it's not really a uh, one uh, one solution for all, but basically it's, it should be catered to specific uh, companies and we look at their core business and how they want to approach and how they want to actually improve their customer experience in this. So the I would say the cost um, and benefit of this will be uh, made to long term. Uh, we need to assess in terms of um, experience wise and how the improvement of the engagement with their clients and so on. Great, um, thank you, Zoe. So um, I think uh, we have some more questions, but we will keep on posting uh, new questions to our LinkedIn and we will get our speakers to respond to the question. So please um, try and join the discussion on LinkedIn. We will uh, move to the next um, agenda of the day. So um, now, as uh, what Zul has presented about the digital transformation and initiative and solutions that we have at Infinity, we would like to officially uh, introduce FOX to all of you. So FOX is basically our in-house solutions that cater for facilities management as well as asset management. So the best thing about FOX is that we put the building occupants and facilities occupants at the forefront of facilities management. So enjoy the video. Managing facilities is challenging. Too many papers, phone calls, and emails. Shouldn't it be easier? Fox was designed and developed to innovate your facilities management and enhance users' experience. Fox makes it simpler for you to manage your facilities through cloud-based web and mobile applications. It enhances the communication, making work seamless, and boosts the productivity of your team. Submitting a request and assigning a work order is simple just by scanning a QR code. Never miss a request again. You have a real-time view about what's going on in your facility without having to pick up the phone or send an email. Keep track of your performance, inventory, and costs through analytics dashboard. 
Fox serves various industries like manufacturing, education, hospitality, commercial, healthcare, and more. Start saving your time and money now. Learn more at www.foxmine.io. Managing. So if you would like to try Fox for free, uh, you can do so by scanning the QR code on the screen. It will lead you to this particular form. It will take you just about two minutes to complete the form. So I'll give you some time. Great, thank you. So now I would need to make some important announcement. For your information, this webinar is recorded and we apologize for the heavy traffic um, that might not allow some of the attendees to join um, through Zoom. So you can view the video on our YouTube channel, Fox MMS, and every attendee will receive an e-certificate of attendance via their registered email. So if you have yet to register, so please do so. I will. Uh, I'll share with you the screen for registration after uh, in a while. And if you have registered for Fox free account, you can expect to receive the login credentials in your registered email in the next few days. We will also be posting a link to an online survey form on our LinkedIn channel so that to gain your feedback about this webinar on what are the things that we can improve in our upcoming webinar. And uh, for your information, this initiative uh, is being made uh, for free for everyone to basically provide exposure and awareness. So if you are interested to be a speaker, you can do so and please email to tamni at infinityfm.my. So here is the QR code for you to scan uh, to register your attendance for today. And we will be sharing the e-certificate through your email. You can also go to this URL. And before we end the session, I would like to acknowledge uh, the speakers for today, Dr. Izni, Mr. Ame, and our CEO, Mr. Zol, the host, Ms. Tamni, thank you for your excellent work and your effort, Infinity Act team, Ms. Hana, Ms. Nabila, Mr. Ibrahim, and Ms. Fatima. So if you would like to get in touch with us for any opportunities, partnership, or any program that you would like to join venture with us, please do contact us at hello at infinityfm.my. You can also view our work and our services through our website, www.infinityfm.my, and also www.foxmy.io for our solution. For that, I thank you, uh, everybody, for participating in today's webinar. A big thanks to all the attendees and um, I wish you all the best. We hope to see you again next time. If you would like to stay for networking, please do so. So for now, I officially announce that the webinar has ended. Thank you very much. If anyone have any questions for the speakers, um, maybe you can take the time. We still have about 13 minutes before we end the sessions today. You can chat uh, in the chat box. The speakers will be with us until 12 o'clock. So uh, we have one question from Mr. Razak Nasim uh, to Mr. Zul. So Zul, what is your view on potential usage of UVC light or high-powered air purification system within buildings? And will it be like one of the systems to be considered in the new upcoming buildings because of this pandemic?
Hello. Um, thank you, Dr. Tazi, for the questions. Um, there's a lot of um, technology being introduced uh, on how we want to mitigate the risk. Like I said, even uh, during this pandemic, we try to assess and we try to project all those uh, situations on how we want to live with COVID. So there's no right or wrong at the moment until we have like a very conclusive answer about how we can uh, actually um, live our life or work as usual and also uh, making sure that building occupants will be safe. But again, all this uh, introduction of uh, technology will be important in the future, but how do we assess it? Um, do we need a specific measurement of data? Uh, where's the standard coming from? And how do we assess uh, eventually the condition of the building based on that standard? So um, the technology being introduced to the uh, situation is, is good, but we also need to ask uh, the question about how we want to measure it, uh, how, do we want, how, how exactly we want to make sure that um, this um, technology or machine is going to be satisfying this standard by KKM, uh, MOH, CDC, or WHO. So I think that's uh, will be more important uh, question to ask. <clears throat> Thank you, Zol. Um, for attendees who, who are asking about sharing the presentation, uh, so yes, all the speakers um, will be sharing their slides presentation with all of you in PDF. So if you would like to receive it through your email, make sure you register your attendance so that we can send it directly to you. Is there any other questions from the floor? Maybe students or researchers doing topic in FM. Anyone who would like to register for PhD can talk to Dr. Izni. Okay, we have another question from Farihan. Uh, in this era of IoT, how does CMMS can be supporting the FM in performing their jobs better? Maybe Mr. Zola or Mr. Ami would like to take the question. Maybe Mr. Zola? Okay, um, CMMS basically uh, it's not an option anymore. It's, it's a need. Uh, if I have the choice to, to include CCC, uh, I think BMS, uh, CMMS will be like uh, one of the key elements that should be inspected for any new buildings uh, with certain size and occupancy. Um, CMMS has evolved um, like a lot uh, since like the past 10 years, uh, the introduction of uh, wireless sensor, the introduction of uh, analytic tools that can help uh, enhance the feature of CMMS. Even our solution uh, is called CMMS, but we have um, this uh, connectivity to wireless sensors. And also our dashboard is uh, equipped with uh, analytic tools for FM to make a more informed decision, a more efficient decision, and uh, it's more product uh, for have uh, to have actually these uh, analytic tools. Uh, one of the key features uh, for our CMMS is basically a collaborative um, platform for any of your technical team on the ground. Uh, even for those people that just join your organization, they are uh, uh, having uh, an acceptable knowledge about the historical of the uh, certain equipment that they are repairing. So they know from the historical uh, log what's been done and then uh, what enhancement has been uh, worked on for that uh, specific equipment. So this uh, open up uh, a lot of um, opportunities uh, for onboarding new technicians so that they'll be more, um, more confident to work on uh, new facilities rather than um, previously um, where all those historical data and uh, logs being um, being kept in certain uh, senior technician or senior charge men or senior engineers.
Thank you, Zul. Um, I think we have another one from Shara. Uh, means the decision making to, sorry, um, the decision making to forecast the intangible benefit in money returned. Is that the question to me? I think so because it says continue. <laughs> So okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Technology adoption basically, uh, you will have to look at uh, both way tangible and intangible. Uh, tangible basically is just a straightforward uh, return of investment or in monetary or commercial value. Uh, you spend one million, you need to see what's the so called return back in um, acceptable period of time. So for our um, for our solution, basically, we help uh, our client to address this kind of um, uh, not so called issue uh, concern. Uh, that's why we, when we work with a partner or client, we are viewing them as mid to long term uh, uh, partners. <clears throat> we have a certain framework for technology adoption, and we look at their core business. Uh, so the return of investment will be uh, relate back to their so-called objective, whether they want to improve um, client retention for occupancy of the building, they want to improve the so-called um, contamination, perhaps you are managing healthcare uh, facilities, uh, or perhaps you want to improve the so-called traffic for uh, walking clients for maybe commercial lots or shopping lots. So all this uh, return can be uh, measurable, uh, is measurable basically, because if you can't measure it, you can't really improve it. So for tangible return, it's quite straightforward and easy to assess compared to intangible. Uh, because most uh, organization that we work with, uh, they will look into tangible return uh, first. Thank you, Zul. Uh, maybe just last one. Uh, this is not a question, but um, such a, a lovely message from Puan Fauzia on ABBS system would like to partner with uh, FM services with Infinity to bring value added enhancement for FM. So Ms. Fauzia, um, can you please help to send an email to hello at infinityfm.my so that we can capture your email address and send you more information about it? Thank you so much. So um, the session is going to end in a few minutes now. I would like to thank again to everybody uh, who joined us today. We still have 50 participants online with us. Uh, for You can add us on LinkedIn to network or to partner or to discuss on research and many others. And again, thank you very much for your attendance. We hope to have similar event with different topics. Maybe you can suggest new topics to us next month. So thank you so much and take care.